Today I am making pandi curry which is pork curry from Kurg. Kurg is like the Scotland of India and this is sort of like their national dish. You could never go to Kurg and not eat pandi curry. I mean if you're in those coffee plantations this is what you should be eating. This is coriander seeds. I'm going to add about half a cup of this. And we're just going to dry roast it. We need it to be like as brown as coffee beans. So So now to this I'm adding four dried red chilies, a piece of cinnamon, four cardamoms, five to six cloves, two teaspoons of fenugreek seeds. I'm adding one and a half teaspoon of cumin seeds, adding another two teaspoons of pepper. And I've already sort of taken out some raw rice. This is about two teaspoons of rice. So I'm just going to keep roasting it for another few sort of minutes because I want everything to be nicely toasted in this as well as I want my you know these coriander seeds to become a little more darker. While you're doing this you'll realize this sort of lovely aroma filling up all the spaces in your house and that's how you know pandi curry is being made. Now when my rice has become sort of brownish in color and this is when I'm going to switch it off. Let it cool. So now that it's at room temperature, I'm just going to put it in the blender. We're not going to add any water into this, we're just going to dry it completely. Now our masala is done. The best thing about this spice mix is that you can keep it for a good week to 10 days. So now we're going to get to step 2 which is we're going to make another masala which is the fresh masala. For this you need a handful of coriander, a few cloves of garlic, I've got two pieces of ginger as well, and about 5 to 6 green chilies, half an onion to this. I'm going to add some water to this. a little bit that's it so you can see it's a fine paste and that's how we want it so let's leave this for now and get to our pork so i've got about 500 grams of pork here this is with fat so let me show it to you so as you can see i've still got the fat in the pork we're going to cook our curry with this fat so we don't need any more oil or anything like that i've already washed the pork again with vinegar and some salt and that's how you want to do it as well to just sort of take away the stickiness okay so just put it in a pressure cooker so to this we are going to add the fresh masala we made i'm going to add the onions in as well and i'm going to add 3 tablespoons of the dry spice mix this i'm going to add some water and i'm going to give it a good mix with my hands itself i've added enough water as well about roughly 1 and 1/2 cup of water first i'm going to go wash my hands then i'm going to cover it and light the gas I'm just going to open it. Oh, it smells absolutely divine. Just let your pressure cooker sit for a while even after the whistle blows. Like I had already switched it off and then just in the end to heat it up. So now to this we're going to add some salt to taste. With me I have got a uh, kombucha which has been soaking in the water for the last half an hour. You could also be using vinegar with some lemon added into it. But I think this works a little better than that. So I'm going to just add the water. Pandi curry is supposed to be sour, so you know the more it sits, the better it will taste. It will taste the nicest tomorrow, day after, and the really nicest bit of it comes a week later. So let's get some onto our plates. My pandi curry will not maybe taste as authentic as the original, simply because I've chosen not to use kurgi vinegar. But if you get your hands on them, you should be using that and nothing else at all. 
To finish this, all you need is some roti, rice, bread, whatever you like really. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. I hope you will also like our video, share our video and subscribe to our channel.